Hi, welcome back to West Coast Geeks. I'm your host, Joaquin. How we doing, people? You know who's with me. Who's, who's with you? It's you. Oh, it's me? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, that's right, people. It's Greg. And for those of you who are new to the channel, you're like, I didn't know it was Greg. Well, now you know it's Greg. So I expect to see you next video. And if you're new to the channel, hello. Thanks for stopping by. And if you make it through the middle, at least, and you're enjoying the content, at that point, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another video. And give us a like. So today's video is the top 10 common magical items for first level characters in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So, uh, Greg, in 3rd edition when you started, or 3.5, did you, were there common magical items back then? Or a lot? I can't remember yeah. offhand. Very little memory. Yeah, I don't. I just don't remember like a there big, were. like a big slot like they did with uh Xanatar's Xanagar, Guide to Everything, you know. So here's our top ten list. Uh, I recommend as a DM that you t definitely during first level sprinkle these items in, and these are the top ten you know most useful items. I mean, you can or give them all like, the you can give them all the other stuff, but. This is the stuff they'll actually like. <laughs> Wasn't 3.5 the one with the magic items tables that you rolled on? Something like that. They all have a magical items table that you roll on. All right. So, number 10, the instrument of illusions. Uh, it requires attunement for a common magical item. It's funny because that means you got to spend an hour and it takes up one of your slots. While you are playing this magic musical instrument, you can create harmless illusionary visual effects within a five foot radius sphere centered on the instrument. If you are barred, the radius increases to 15 feet. Sample visuals and effects include luminous musical notes, spectral dancers, butterflies, a gentle falling snow. The magical effect has neither substance nor sound. And they are obviously illusions. The effect ends when you stop playing. So what do you think of this this item? Kind of cool. Kind of reminds me of, uh, what's the movie? Kubo. You ever watched Kubo? No, I didn't. By, it's like by that same claymation studio that did the, or by people from the same, who did like the, was the Halloween Christmas yeah. Jack? Whatever. Oh, they did that from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, but it's like uh, like people who did the technology, like the oh okay stop motion did yeah. their own private project, and this was a movie. And it's okay. really hey man. Well, well high, high, check that to me right high. now, and I'll go look for it later. Yeah. But I think this is a great magical item that you know your first level bard or whoever can find, and you know at first level when they're when they're in the village and they're low on funds. Um, having him being, he or she being able to play their instrument and then start telling stories with illusions is cool and should help their enchants of uh, increasing, you know, their tips, basically. So, uh, combat-wise, no. Uh, attunement, this is one of those items that you will not be attuning later on. But for first level, pretty cool instrument. Especially, like I said, for villages and stuff. Or if you're in front of, like, you know, the local magistrate and, you know, you're, they're asking you what happened, you can, you know, be creative. All right, number nine is the Cloak of Many Fashions. While wearing this cloak, you can use a bonus action to change the style, color, and apparent quality of the garment. The cloak's weight does not change regardless of its appearance. The cloak cannot be anything but a cloak. Although it can duplicate the appearance of magical cloaks, it doesn't gain their magical properties. What do you think? Cloak in many fashions? Number nine. It has to be a cloak? It has to be a cloak. So you can't like, like, turn it into like a suit or something? No. Seems not great. It's basically just a color-changing cloak. Well, And it, maybe like a fabric texture-changing cloak. I mean, it's well, it does say really the style, anything. color, and the quality does change. So, 
in a sense, like you can make yourself appear to be a beggar real quick. Like, you know, like, you know, as you round the corner, you're like, uh, your your cloak, but not like your rest of your clothes. Yeah, but you but your but your cloak can cover up most of your clothes, right? So it, if you wanted to do something where you want them to chase you, you have them chase you in like a bright color, and then you turn a corner and then you switch it to a different color, like a dull color. They're gonna be looking for that bright color. And I think like, like a failure on the disguise kit could do a better job, honestly. <laughs> Greg. Greg is infamous infamous for uh failing his describe I mean his disguise checks, like he'll roll like a seven or a six, and I'm like, Yeah, you have the fake glasses and nose with the mustache as the equivalent of your disguise. I think that'd be better than cloak, at least that obscures your face a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's a common magical item. It's a cloak. You can do some things. Um, I'm not saying that these items will thrill most of your players, but at least it's better than nothing. Now, I know the uh, instrument would be, you know, a bard would, would love to have that. So, number eight is the Unbreakable Arrow. This arrow cannot be broken except when it's in an anti-magical field. Um, nice item to give to first level without really you know breaking anything because um they're just magical arrows and they're not plus one or anything but they do count as magical arrows and they can't break so okay I mean, give me one you don't know which more you can really do with that yeah so give me a whole bunch of them yeah yeah don't give don't no. Don't give, give, give me a few of them yeah don't give like one or two like make sure you give them like a quiver of like you know, six to twelve. Like, make it random. Oh, so, Joaquin, if they're so harmless, make sure that you give my character some of these. I will. All right. You guys are in the middle okay. of fighting the cobalts. Maybe you'll find a quiver. Yeah. All right. What on earth will I be able to do with an unbreakable arrow? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. This door is now locked together. <laughs> it's unbreakable. We cannot pick this lock. <laughs> How would you get it jammed in there? What, would you just stick it in the keyhole? I mean, all you need is like two loops. Let me stick it through. I mean, I suppose you could get really creative and stick it into the ground and wedge it into the door. Mm. Yeah, wedge it into any door. Can't can't break. Yeah, I mean, there's that. I mean, you know, Greg's always finding busted ways to do stuff with material. So, yeah, Unbreakable Arrows... Um, nice magical items to have at first level. And if, you, if there's like any machinery at all, just stick it in the gears. Yep, that too. Don't don't use it as an arrow. That's the worst part. Just no, do other things. No, use it. an arrow. Just a normal no, arrow. But that's like then you're just throwing away an unbreakable thing. Think of it as no, an unbreakable most stick that you can also shoot. Their arrows. All right, number seven. Uh oh. Okay. Number seven is the uh, perfume of bewitching. This tiny vial contains magical perfume enough for one use. You can use an action to apply the perfume to yourself, and its effect lasts one hour for the duration. You have advantage in all charisma checks directed at humanoids of challenge rating one or lower. Those subject to the perfume effects are not aware they've been influenced by magic. So when they say humanoid, would that affect people too? I don't think so. Yeah, so Maybe. It's a humanoid. I don't know. Do you, do you, humanoid means human like. So the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, humanoid know with, with D&D classifications. Humanoid means human like. I mean, that's really what it means. It's, so yeah. it's like elves or orcs or anything that's like conscious and can speak languages. That's humanoid. Yeah. Well, I guess I like has, 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 it's Think of it as. People who have the intelligence of a human and not an animal or a beast, basically. Well, thank you for that education. And for those of you who didn't know, you now know what humanoids are. So, um, yeah, I mean, number seven, I think, you know, perfume or bewitching, you know, would first you level. As a G, would you as a GM, like, since one use, would I be able to use it on my entire party? Or would that be one use for one person only? It says directed at humanoids of challenge rating of one or lower. No, no, I mean like who you can apply it to. You apply it only to one person or could you apply it to your whole party? 
No, no, it states in there as an action one, you apply one the perfume to yourself and it affects last okay. for one hour. I yeah, mean, so it's, it's a common magical item, so it shouldn't break the bank yeah. to buy a bunch of them. Yeah. So, you know. Already I mean, Greg's like, well, make your check. Oh, failed. Next person, make your, make, have them make their check. <laughs> oh, but it'd, it'd just be a little more useful if you could do your whole yeah. party. Yeah, I mean, it, it can help you influence things, so that's one of those things. I like it. Uh, I, I feel people can be creative with it. And, and again, yeah. these are just items that you should just sprinkle in with the normal magical items or treasures that they find. Just drop one of these. You know, because this is really the most of these items are the items that they're going if the once if they're going to use them, they're going to use them now. And then once they get like third level, most of these items they're not going to use except for the moon touch touch sword. And, and remember dark, that remember what? that the perf, remember that the perfume doesn't have to be good smelling. It could be like you know, smell like other things. You could like try to perfume yourself to get the reputation of something that smells bad. Like something that smells weird, Greg. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like you like perfume yourself. I'm like, I want it to smell like alcohol. And they go, like, I was so drunk. Right? Like, oh, he's fuming. But I wasn't really drunk. Okay. <laughs> well, you do get your uh, oh. you do get your charisma check on that and bluffing. So, um, yeah, you know, you never know. Like I said, they're like all these items have a lot of useful, creative, useful um, opportunities in the game. But this one's just practical. Number six is the Moon Touch Sword in Darkness. The unsheathed blade of this sword sheds moonlight, creating a light in a 15 foot radius and dim light for an additional 15 feet. Um, right now, my party is currently going through a cave, a cobalt cave. And um, nobody took light <laughs> for their cantrips, which is funny. So now they have to like figure out who's got different light sources going. And uh, I want to uh, what's the orbs? I know someone has it. I don't know why they're not using it. Yeah, I think it. they do. But then you guys let uh, Omar die, and he was the one who had the light source. Oh, not my fault. <laughs> I know it wasn't your fault. I had so much plans. I people were like, oh, what the hell are you talking about? It's like, so I uh, let them have an opportunity to save a person who was being eaten by spiders, who just happened to be in the campaign. One of the um, guards who are responsible for another player's uh, village being destroyed and parents being kidnapped. And so Michael, who's playing that character, um, Ren, goes, well, I want him to die because he was part of my village being destroyed and, um, you know, my parents being captured. And I go, yeah, but Omar wasn't personally responsible. He's like, I don't care. So he convinced the other two members that he should die. And after he died, I was like, you know, he had more information to help you with the campaign. And they're like, so? <laughs> So, uh, the Omar was like, he was going to be another, uh, foot soldier for them while they're going through the caves. And then if they liked him, maybe they could have taken him in, but I guess we'll never know. So that, that's the short story of Omar. I should do a video about player characters killing the wrong people who are helpful. I think that'll be funny. But, um, moon touch sword, Greg, I mean, doesn't it speak for itself? Light, always useful. Very cool. I like it. Yeah. I mean, there's not much more to say about it. It's a magical sword. And you could actually later on take the sword and have it reforged and add more magical properties to it. But most other magical swords already have that, so I probably wouldn't do that. But still, first level, finding this, great treasure. Number five, walloping ammunition. This ammunition packs a wallop. A creature hit by this ammunition must succeed on a DC 10 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. What do you think, Greg? This for like slings or what? There's any ammunition. I'm sorry, what? 
What what's this for? It's like arrows. Oh, well, this, you could you could put this on any ammunition. Okay, cool. You know, so yeah. it could be like it could be like sling stones. It yeah, could, I, you know, I think you, cool. could, you could even I, probably put it on a throwing dagger. I think they should uh, do more things like that. Honestly. You could probably even put it on a spear. Um, you know, I mean, even though it says walloping ammunition, it's a common, so you could you know tinker with it as a DM, but. Usually it's going to be on like arrows and uh, sling bullets, but I think it's pretty cool, you know. Even though it's a strength yeah. ten, you know, you could be knocking like goblins back and other creatures, you know. Um, all a, a strength ten means is that the person's got a fifty-fifty chance plus modifiers to not be knocked prone. So you're still going to do the arrow damage, and then you have a chance to knock them prone. Uh -huh. Yeah. I could always see Greg trying to formulate how to bust this. Like, I'd put grease on the floor or, like, those marbles or the uh, cantrips so they're trying to walk and then you're constantly hitting them with arrows and trying to push them back to make them go back through those things again. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's you know, yeah. one quick idea off the top of my head right there. Um Later on in the game, when you start crafting magical items, you could actually craft them to be a little bit more powerful and make them like a rare or, or an uncommon, you know. Like an uncommon, I would I would pop up the strength check to 12. And if it was a rare, I'd make it a 15. That's just me. So there, you know, there are plenty of, uh, plenty of things you can do with this arrow or this ammunition. Plus, I like the artwork I chose that I found for this. But I thought this looks pretty cool. Looks like a ranger about to knock somebody down. Any other suggestions for walloping ammunition, Greg? Now that I've given you well, a I chance think, to think, think about it. I think it's a good idea. Um, get to do is there any kind of like extra little effect that you add to weapons. Just seem like this is, just seems fun and not terribly overpowered. Yeah. Because you can, just give them out like one round of that thing and then that's like go fetch it right well um i would again i would put these in like you know anywhere between either like a 1d4 or 1d6 or 1d8 like something where they can you know we're talking like first level so um you know you don't want them to just have it every single time you want no to be, you, be you want them to be able to like use it for a few encounters and that's it yep you know especially at first level you need all the help you can get all right, we're getting down. Number four, uh, Pole of Collapsing. So when I, fun fact, before I even start the description, I went looking for images. I put, I typed, this is what I typed in. d and d Art Images, Magic Pole. It gave me images of black and white stripper poles with a girl image stripping, dancing on the pole. That's what you were searching for, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. I was like, man, what the hell? Dude, I don't even look up. I don't even look por up porn on my uh, laptop. I was like, I don't want to mess that up. They're like, sure, Joaquin. I was like, no, I'm 50, dude. I don't need to be looking at that. I know better. Use your phone. If that gets jacked up, you can always get another one. That's why you have insurance. Hello, people. All right. Enough shenanigans about my life. All right. It's a uh, wondrous item common, which all of these are. are. While holding, holding this 10-foot pole, you can use the action to speak a command word and cause it to collapse into a one-foot long pole for easy to storage. The pole weight doesn't change. You can use an action to speak a different command word and cause the rod to revert to a pole. However, the rod will elongate only as far as the surrounding space allows. All right, Greg. Great item, good item. You feel bad if you you get this magical item? I think it's pretty good, especially if like a monk. I think a monk would be really good with it. Also, a druid probably would be okay with it. Good yeah. with it. Unless it's like metal, then he doesn't want it, but druids... Yeah, yeah. I, I would consider this like a quarter staff, you know, when you're fighting and stuff. Um, it says you can collapse it to a one foot. So, like, if it said five, that would be great. 
because then you could use it like a quarter staff and be like you know fighting and then when you need it to be 10 feet then you could fight and get that extra reach and be like pa that's just me <laughs> so you know there, at the beginning of Dungeons and Dragons the way to uh, search for traps is that you had to carry around a 10 foot pole the bad part was somebody had to carry around a 10 foot pole while in the dungeon which is why you had henchmen uh yeah there, there are a lot of uses for these I mean you could put the pole and tie rope to it and you know um use it to swing on depending on the weight i don't know there lots little... of tra- like 10 feet at the, the, the distance between buildings are about 10 feet in like alleyways or about yeah. 10 feet the narrow alleyways so you Try can like vault. no i mean like stick it horizontally from wall to wall you can like pull yourself up like a pull up yeah, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of little things you can do with all these magical items. Same thing with most equipment, so, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. the, the oh. best for monks. Best for monks, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. Number three. Another image I had a hard time finding for. So the Ruby of the War Mage. This, is the one, this requires entombment by a spellcaster. Uh, etched with eldritch runes, this one-inch diameter ruby allows you to use a simple martial weapon as a spell casting focus for your spells. For the property to work, you must attach the ruby to the weapon by pressing the ruby against it for at least 10 minutes. Thereafter, the ruby cannot be removed unless you detach it in action or the weapon is destroyed. Not even an anti-magical field causes it to fall off, which is weird. Because you would think an anti-magical field is more powerful than a common magical item. The ruby does not fall off the weapon if you're attuned to the ruby end. So I was looking for a magical wand, and apparently there are hardly any images of, of wizards holding magical wands. Even though this says you can attune it to like a weapon or something, but you know. I, I think it just looks cool to have it like on a like a wooden stick for like a wand. All right, Greg. So you play a lot of wizards, spell casting class. Is this something that you try to get at first level? That would be neat, I think. Um, I don't know if it would necessarily. Some builds would really love it. Yeah. Some builds would really love it. Yeah. Some of it, I don't think it would matter, but yeah. You know, I mean, you know, to have a like a spell casting focus where you're not worried about it, um, and you can put it on your dagger or whatever on the hilt of the dagger or something. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's common. It's not the uncommon version of the wand of the war mage, which does shenanigans. And you can check that video out in our uncommon magical items. So we're getting down to you know the two most useful common magical items. I gotta check OBS to make sure it's still recording. All right, all right, here we go, people. Number two, the Horn of Silent Alarm. So apparently, like, little buddies come out and let you know that something's going on, according to this image of the horn. But um, the, the horn has four charges. When you use an action to blow it, one creature of your choice can hear the horn's blare. Provide the creature is within 600 feet of the horn, it is not deafened. No other creature hears the sound coming from the horn. The horn regains 24 expendable charges daily at dawn. Hmm. What do you like and what do you don't like about the horn? Um, a creature can hear, okay. Only so one. Then you need creatures. So you have to have creatures for this to even be worthwhile having. Um, it can't be a familiar. I mean, it can be a familiar, but if you have a familiar, it'd just be easier to communicate with the familiar via the fact that it's a familiar. Yeah. So it's probably for a non-magic user, or at least not a spellcaster type, not a wizard. Probably. I mean, the middle spellcasters maybe. 
but basically it's like a good so century like, item you give it to the person who's on guard right and you can send okay. that person a little bit farther out than they normally would and okay. then you just pick one person of the group that's known not to you know sleep be a heavy sleeper and you can blow that horn and wake them up okay so it player characters you count as creatures huh mm-hmm well, it says, okay. provided the creature, I think it means like, I think that kind of wording is like a creature, one creature of your choice. Um, is there a way of saying like, you know, player character or, or, or anything? Like you can do that to a bugbear or something from like 600 feet away. You know, you see a right. bugbear and you could be like, um, you can just go in the opposite direction the group's in. And you just blow the horn, right? And so the bugbear sentry over here is like, what? And so they're getting everybody ready, and you keep, you know, you blow the horn again, and they're starting to send troops. Meanwhile, you hit them from the back. Okay. That's, that's one way of being creative with it. You know, again, first level, you know, what do you expect? Very limited magical items, but these are things that will not break the game. And the last is actually, you know, your spellcaster will love this last item. Hat of Wizardry. Uh, it does require attunement by a wizard. Uh, this antiquated cone-shaped hat is adorned with gold crescent moon stars. While you're wearing it, you gain the following benefits. You can use the hat as a spellcasting focus for your wizard spells. You can try to cast a cantrip that you don't know. The cantrip must be in the wizard's list. And you must make a DC 10 Intelligent Arcane check. If the check succeeds, you cast the spell. If the check fails, that is the spell. And the action used to cast the spell is wasted. In either case, you cannot try this property again until you finish a long rest. I really hate that best part. So Wait. it's a one-time use. Of one, a, once per day. Once, once per, per day. day. Yeah, my bad. A once per day Use of a cantrip that you normally wouldn't pick. Right. You know, and you get to change it up every day. So it's not something like sure. you have to pick. But yeah, it only works, what, 60% of the time? Yeah. You yeah. got to roll that intelligence check or something. Yeah, that's. And, you know, you the, the benefit of it is you get a cantrip, which, I mean, cool, sure. But yeah. You don't like get it guaranteed. That's the point of the cantrip is that it's always there for you. It always works. Yeah, but this is to give you an That's option of getting a a cantrip that you normally wouldn't take. But then in this situation, the cantrip is useful. I know, I know. So it's so. I mean, not as, it it's it doesn't work quite as well as it sounds. Is the issue because you do fail? Yeah. I mean, a good amount of the time, especially if the cantrip also requires like that attack roll. Then you're rolling to be able to even use the thing, and then you have to roll to attack or something. And it's just like you start rolling so many dice, your chances of failure, even if your percentages are good, or just go up high and high. Yeah, this would be an item that once I start getting some gold and gems and other things that I would take to have um imp to have the uh item improved upon to become a common magical item to where i can use it like you know especially if we're talking uncommon like you get four charges and at the uh end of a long rest you roll a d4 and so you have four charges of cantrips per day and so any of these other useful cantrips that you normally wouldn't take now you can take it and then if you fail the first time, then, you know, you, it's not a feel-bad moment. So, those are other ideas. So, uh, what do you think of these uh, magical items overall list? It's 1 through 10. I think the arrow is the most destructive one. The, it's the best one. The unbreakable arrow. arrow? Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, yeah. like I said, you can find uses for all this stuff. Um, as a DM, I would really highly recommend, especially if you're playing like a um, adventure 
where uh, the treasure is already scripted out, just throw in one of these common magical items in there and try to pick a magical item for each member of the group, especially for first level. All right, people, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you made it this far, I hope we definitely have earned your sub uh, subscription. Uh, leave a comment below. You know, do you like any of these items? As a DM, would you even recommend giving them out? Or as a player character, would you even like any of these magical items as part of your treasure? So is that, people. We'll catch you next week. Here, everyone.